In today's video, I'm going to give a quick introduction to asynchronous programming. Today, async programming is becoming increasingly popular. Python's async IO library provides this capability, and Node.js is completely designed to use the async model. But what is it, and why might you want to learn it? I'm Mikey, and this is the Art of Software. For today's introduction, I'm going to compare the different execution models that you're likely to encounter as a programmer. This will hopefully help you understand what the async model is. The three main execution models are single-threaded synchronous, multi-threaded synchronous, and single-threaded asynchronous, which is the one that we ultimately want to talk about. Firstly, let's take a look at the single-threaded synchronous model. By default, something like Python is single-threaded and synchronous. This is the simplest execution flow to understand. Each task is performed one at a time. The next one only begins after the current one has completed. This is really easy to follow. If all tasks are performed in a specific order, a later task can assume that all previous tasks have completed and that their output is available for that task to use. For example, something like Python's Flask development server is single-threaded and synchronous by default. Each incoming request is served one at a time. So if one request takes a particularly long time, then the second person is going to have to wait until the first one is complete before their request even begins to be processed. Now this is okay if you're writing a small web server that isn't gonna have a lot of traffic, but if you want to have a bit more performance, then the single-threaded synchronous model is not ideal for the web server situation. In order to solve the problem of one task waiting on another, we need to look at execution models that allow for concurrency. That is, the ability to perform multiple tasks simultaneously. A common one is the multi-threaded model. In this flow, all our tasks can be performed at the same time, but in different threads of execution. The threads are managed by the operating system. They may truly run concurrently on different processes, but they could just be interleaved together on a single processor. The low-level details are not typically something that a developer needs to worry about. They just need to think about the independent streams of instructions that may or may not run at the same time. Now this might look simple, but don't be fooled. Threads need to coordinate and communicate with each other, and this leads to a set of challenges. In short, it can be hard to get right. This multi-threaded model can be implemented using threads or with processes. The details are slightly different, but the execution model is the same. Now this leads us to the single-threaded asynchronous model. The single-threaded asynchronous model allows us to perform multiple tasks at the same time. But unlike the multi-threaded model, the programmer knows that only one task will be executing at any given time. This makes the async model somewhat simpler than the multi-threaded one. One major difference with the async model is that the programmer decides when one task should suspend and give control to a different task. One thing to note is that in the async model, all the tasks will always interleave regardless of how many processes the application is running on. We've seen that the async model is simpler than the multi-threaded one. However, it's clearly more complicated than the synchronous model. Now, given that only one task is executing at any given time, why would the async model be any more performant than the synchronous one? What do we get with the added complexity of the async model? The answer is to do with waiting. If there is waiting involved, the async model will significantly outperform the synchronous one. Now, what do I mean by waiting? I mean when the program is waiting to perform I.O., that is, transferring data to or from an external device. This might simply be a disk read or a network call. In an application like a web server, most of the time will be spent waiting for data to be transferred. A synchronous application will block and wait for the I.O. to complete before going on to the next task. The key idea behind an asynchronous program is that when it gets to a point where a synchronous program would usually wait, it can actually go and perform another task whilst it's waiting for that data to finish transferring. This allows the application to make progress on other tasks whilst the initial task is still pending. The switching between tasks happens when a task begins to wait or it completes. An async program will significantly outperform a synchronous program if there are a lot of tasks doing a lot of waiting. If you're going to build an application and it meets any of the following criteria, then it's probably a good idea to consider the async model instead of writing it synchronously. Number one, there are a large amount of tasks, which makes it more likely that one task can continue to execute whilst another one is waiting. 
Number two, the task performed a lot of I.O. So in a synchronous program, you'd waste a lot of time waiting for that I.O. to happen. Uh, in the async program, you can use that time to work on other tasks. Three, the tasks are largely independent from each other. So a good example of this would be a web server serving independent clients. Let's have a look at the notable characteristics of a web server in this context. Each task can be considered as the server reading an incoming request and processing it and sending a response. The client requests are largely independent. So it seems that the networking server is a perfect candidate for the async execution model. Now this is what Python's async IO module allows you to do. It allows you to change the default execution model of Python from the single threaded synchronous model to the async one. Async IO is becoming more and more popular every day. Even Django, which has typically not been async in the past, is now rewriting large chunks of its internal request handling to be asynchronous. They aim to be completely async in the near future. Asynchronous web frameworks like FastAPI are really beginning to pick up steam. And with Python's limited threading capabilities, it seems like this is the perfect way forward to writing more flexible and performant web applications. Now Node.js has been asynchronous from the beginning, which is why it's such a popular tool for building web apps. Learning how to use Python's async IO will improve your ability to understand Node.js and JavaScript applications. So there we go, a quick introduction to asynchronous programming. In my next tutorial video on the subjects, I'm gonna dive into some code and show you how to actually write some async code using Python. Until then, thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, press that subscribe button with the bell icon and I'll let you know when the next video comes out. See you next time.